Welcome back to the LCS. I am here with a quick playoff update after that statement victory from 100 Thieves. They are still in the running for at least a tiebreaker for top one, but they do have to rely on FlyQuest losing to be able to get that. Um, and for NRG, essentially, if we have all red side victories, they are out of playoffs. So they're no longer in charge of their own destiny. They just became the biggest C9 fans who will lock top six with a win uh, and set us up for one tiebreaker. Take it away, Flowers, Jat, and Sven. Thank you so much, Emily. Welcome back, everybody. It's the last day of the regular season here for the LCS. I'm Captain Flowers, joined by Jat for the next couple of games. And we got Sven as our special guest here on the casting desk. You've been here a couple of times before. It's great to have you back, man. It's good to be back. I miss this place so much. You have no idea. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. How are we feeling coming into this C9 versus Shopify matchup today? I'm not feeling too good about the Lucian first pick. Okay. I am not a fan. <laughs> I mean, even though Berserker passes the passport check for the Lucian pick, you know, you gotta be Korean or Chinese to play that one, I still don't like it. Uh, I think it's not C9's biggest strength to play. I think that it's worked. They've won some games with it, like mm -hmm. yesterday or the day before, I think it was. But mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of it. I mean, Crap. I will say that you showed up to the studio and we immediately got bangers. We got the 100 <laughs> Thieves picking Vagar Shaco, oh, yeah. styling and winning, and then one other thing we're talking about is if 100 Thieves ends up being second seed with a FlyQuest win in the next game and a C9 win this game, that would be their first round playoff matchup, would actually be C9 100 Thieves. Yeah. But the chaotic thing yeah! I'm actually looking for, and I know you might have a little bit of C9 attachment still, would be the Shopify Rebellion win because that can create the most tiebreaker scenarios. That can still move them into playoffs. It could mean energy could straight up just miss playoffs. I think that's the maximum chaos situation that I'm here. Do we want chaos? I want chaos today. Okay, okay. Well, we've got Lucian and Nami and Renekton for C9. Fudge is back in Lizard Jail as Shopify will draft the Ivern for Boogie as well as the Kaisa Nautilus in bot lane for B-Boy and Zazel. No Smolder or Senna this game, by the way. Didn't call that out at the start as yeah. we jumped into the champ select, but yep. both of our infinite scaling marksmen are gone. Both teams are banning for maximum entertainment here. We're getting down. Getting hands Absolutely. Game with Lucian versus Kaisa. Guaranteed action in the ball lane. So that's nice. I like that. And, and Sven, I know you've been uh, spending a lot of time in Korea playing solo queue. Yeah. Over there, amazing solo queue. Nice. You've been watching LCS, but you haven't been involved or seen any of Cloud9's yeah. discussions. But from the outside, what do you feel like they've been struggling with this split? Because I was expecting them to have 10 or 11 wins by this point, but they're 7 right. 6. Yeah, I think C9's biggest issue is identity issues. They've mm -hmm. been playing too many different things. Yeah. They should be playing. Like, I don't like them playing Enchanters for the first. I know Berserker likes to play Lucian Nami, likes to play Hyper Carries and Enchanters, but I don't think it fits Vulcan at all. Mm -hmm. I think that's the first thing they've been on wrong. I don't think they've yeah. had a lot of really bad drafts. The Orn yesterday was a big a big mismatch for C9. I think previously they've been picking Akali, Natalia, Vi. It seems really hard to play for them. That was only a one-time occurrence either. Yeah. Just a lot of questionable drafts and seemingly identity issues. Playing around the wrong lanes when they shouldn't be, for example. Yeah, and I think what you say about uh, yeah, this one the, the missed identity, I mean, stuff like this, uh, we, we count Engage as Orn. He was actually 3-0 on the Nautilus before he played that for Engage. And the two Lucian Melio games they played, they lost. The one Lucian Nami game they played, they won. I think it shows up the most with Blabber, actually. He's played 10 unique champions. He's played no jungler more than twice, right? Like, that's not a sign of a team that really is committed to what they've been doing. They've been experimenting with a lot of different stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. The draft where they had the first pick Nautilus, and then they were picking either Senna into Smolder <laughs> or Smolder into Senna. Those drafts fit them a lot better, even if they had a pretty bad game yesterday on Senna. Yeah. I think that that style with the Smolder fits them much better. All right, let's see how this last band is going to go. The Aatrox banned out by C9, trying to keep that one away from Fake God. Huey will also be the band. This champion has found a lot of popularity, a lot of success so far. Sejuani and Ari also banned out. Shopify still need to pick both solo laners. I'm expecting top here since you already know what the enemy top laner is going to be. And then you save the very last pick of the draft for Insanity. Udir was something we saw so much of back at the start of the split a few weeks ago. Has not been the same level of presence since. Has been some nerfs and things like that. But let's see. Do they really want to lock that in? Could just be that usual kind of pick it into anything choice. Yeah, I think it makes sense for Shopify to just pick a tank top and just play mm -hmm. a tank versus tank matchup because 
it's been all about B-Boy for this team. If they win, it's him who's carrying. If they lose, it's not him who's carrying. Then no one's carrying them. <laughs> it, it yeah. really is that simple for this team. I think B-Boy has been a silent MVP for this team. It's mm -hmm. the B-Boy show for the most part. Kaisa Nautilus against Rishnami is a explosive lane. It's a lot of yeah. potential for someone dying a lot in the early game. Either way, so I think it's important to try to pick the tank top and let them be on an island the whole game. So they can play on B-Boy. Yeah, I agree. Also, the fact that Fake God is 2-0 when the team has played Uder. I believe those were both Scion Uder games, so they just had a bunch <laughs> of circular tanks yeah. when B-Boy was able to carry. I also think there's a unlikely but outside chance we could see Insanity AP Kai'Sa mid. It's something he's played in the past. It, it's because they have Kai'Sa Nautilus already as such a good pair, yeah, yeah, and I right. don't see like some flex actually catching them off guard here, but I always do wonder if Insanity is going to pull out something weird. Yeah, I think Kai'Sa mid's generally only viable against like LeBlanc type of champs, yeah. uh, low range, non-poke matchups, probably against mages like Nico. But uh, we'll see what they build as well on the Kai'Sa. Mm -hmm. Has to be AD this game, I feel, with the Ivern and the uh, Udyr. We've seen a lot of different builds on Kai'Sa recently. Yeah. And Static Shift Ginsu is most common one these days. They could go with something like Jace mid, and that could allow them some flexibility, but... They do have the Iron, so Tristana an option as well. It's yeah. not banned, I believe. That would be pretty nice. Tristana versus Nico is a pretty explosive matchup, but I have seen it before. It can work. All right, Blabber Kindred, final pick of the draft here for C9. They'll be rocking that one. So we've got the Enchanter with the Nami, two different Marksmen to be able to bless up. There's not a true yeah, tank is. on the side of C9. I mean, you've got Bruiser Renekton, but we're not really looking at any straight up meatball here to deal with Shopify. Final pick, Tristana. I will say that Tristana gets a lot better against Kindred because you can like put a bomb on him and you can you know, push him out of his own Eat ultimate him. and then explodes out of the Kindred ultimate. So it's a lot better now. They kind of like almost like, you know, gave it to them. Yeah, like pick it, yeah. I dare you kind of thing. I also see this is the first time Blabber's played Kindred this split, but I know it was a go-to, especially when yes. you were on Cloud9. How do you yeah. feel about Blabber's Kindred? What's unique about it? Yeah, last year we really liked the kindred Melio combination. It gives mm. Kindred a lot of range. Basically like, never lost with it. Yeah, we were undefeated, I think, almost the entire split with it. We lost one game to TL, unfortunately. Close to now. Hey, Close hey, to hey, those guys, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. It's all right, everybody gets one. Yeah, but Blabber is a very Kindred player. He's very in your face. Mm. He likes to invade, likes to go for the marks, no matter where they are, at what time of the game they are. He creates a lot of space on Kindred. He jumps in, flashes one's ability, jumps out again. His biggest problem with Kindred is he does that a lot. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he's a very coin flippy player on Kindred sometimes, where he might get one shot by the Nautilus hook into the ultimate and not get his ult off, or he will kill the other one. But so. do we think that's a good thing uh, going up against something like an Ivern who, whenever we see this champion, the thing that you always think about is that first clear is so fast yeah. if he's not interrupted, if nobody messes around with him. So yeah. Blabber is the kind of guy to mess around with you a little bit. I guess so. Ivern teams almost always pick carry junglers. Last game we saw Shaco. Uh, but <laughs> in the past, we've seen like Kane or, you know, those kind of junglers that are a bit more fast paced. They like to yeah. invade or fight early game, but Ivern is weak until six. So I think it makes sense to do for something like Kindred. Only thing I'm worried about is that Sina doesn't have a tank. They have a right, right top. It's, like, it's more of a bruiser, right? Don't yeah, really, yeah. In, normally, see like an orange top or a scion when you have Kindred, so you have one guy who can just be, you know, soaking damage for you to move forward. So Sina doesn't have a problem if they don't have a frontline this game and they fall behind. So based on both complete compositions that we've seen so far, where would you rather be playing? The C9 or the Shopify side based on the comps? Oof. That depends if I'm the ADK or in support. Okay. Yeah. Well, which for which then? Okay, I would rather be playing Kaisen than losing Nami. Okay. But I'd rather be playing the Nami than the Nautilus in this game. Okay. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Kind of, uh, both both it, sides it, of the coin there. It just depends. I think bot's going to be very explosive. I think that Kaisen Nautilus can't just farm minions for free. Mm -hmm. So they're either going to get their hands dirty, get in there and fight, or they're going to lose. I think Shopify knows that with tank versus tank top matchup, it's going to be either mid jungle game or bottom game. Mm -hmm. They have to just choose. Yeah, and these drafts for me as well show, again, really strong early game priority for Cloud9. Like, this looks to me a lot like the drafts they were yeah. playing even in week one of the split, where they're like, we're just going to pick Pryo everywhere and no then hope to turn it into a win, yeah. which is where I feel like they, they fell short a lot of the time because sometimes they'd use their Pryo to, like, stack two early dragons mm -hmm. or get a bunch of grubs early. But the actual transition to a win is difficult, and I think they could be <laughs> in the same position here unless JoJo has, like, an insane game. Because yeah. he's going to be the one that actually has to do all the engages, but with no frontline, he could very well get one shot at the start of every fight. Mm -hmm. But if there's one person on Cloud9 that you feel comfortable saying he needs to have an insane game, I feel like it is JoJo. Because yes. even Absolutely. though this team has not been at the level where a lot of people were expecting them to be coming into the split, he has had a lot of individual pop-off moments, even in losses. 
Yeah, and many other pros in the league also recognize that Dilipion is performing very well. MVP <laughs> level even, some people say, despite the fact that his team is struggling. Well, there's third place right now, I believe, 7-6, but compared to what people thought they would be, he's definitely playing a lot better compared to his teammates. You know, Berserker, for example. <laughs> so I think it's, it's valid. Win lane, win game has always been the one thing that breaks all drafts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how bad your draft is, if you win all three lanes, it's fine. You just win the game. Yeah, then it doesn't matter because it won't be a, it'll be a team fight, except for the ones we are so far ahead, so win lane, win game. Yeah, I feel like that's also oh. oftentimes always insanity is already going in for a big trade. More true in scrims than it is on stage. Oh, yeah. Because you win all three <laughs> lanes in scrims, the other team loses their mind trying to come back in. They're like, okay, yep. we're out of the game in 12 minutes. But on stage, they're like more patient, yep. willing to, to wait it out. And then they actually kind of, like, three winning lanes, a lot of times on stage ends up being a trap. Yes, because there's too yes, much you can play around, and it makes the scaling difference even bigger for the other team, which is kind of close to the situation we could be in here. Because if Fudge plays the Renekton right with the buffs, I'm not sure how that matchup goes, but I could see a world where C9 actually wins all three lanes here. Yeah. I can guarantee you that in scrims, comps like C9's comp wins more often than they do on stage. Yeah. They might still win this game, but in scrims, they definitely win this game. <laughs> I, I feel like that's got to be the Lucian Nami effect, right? Oh, Lucian, yeah. oh, Lucian oh. Nami has to be one of the most Lucian. scrim buffed duos, He's right? He's the biggest offender, for yeah. sure. <laughs> And he, he's got his partner up there in top lane as well. The second biggest offender of, <laughs> of scrim win rate. The gunman and the lizard yep. taking over scrim since the dawn of time. You can see Boogie hanging out down here, seeing maybe there's an angle. There is that ward in the pixel brush heading into bottom lane. So Berserker and Vulcan will get this wave shoved up, crash into the tier one, and they'll take the opportunity to just head on back to a safer spot. Let's see if Lara wins the coin flip here on the crabs. The All right. Mark. Oh, nope. Nope. Unlucky. He might actually be able to get it still. He could. Blabber they, probably they will assume. Cryo. Yeah, Blabber will probably assume that it's gone at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so he might not even go for it, even though it's still up. Or he might cross map here. Jojo has prior, so no, nope. he's assuming that uh, Boogie's on the crab. Sees him now, though. He would know, but at now, this point, the bot lane's recalling. Now Boogie knows. Sven, being a former bot laner, AD carry and support, we do want to get your opinion uh, on the bot lanes, kind of about who is better. Who's better? Amongst these two bot lanes. I think there's a difference between who's better and who's performing better. Okay. Because I would take Berserker over B-Boy any day. Well, actually, we're talking about you. Oh, shit. So, <laughs> is the better bot lane Berserker's Ven or Vulcan's Ven? Because you've played them both. Ah, oh, shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, putting okay. you on the spot here. This is, this is tough because I'm good friends with both Berserker and, and Vulcan. So, what do I do here? Who do yeah. I throw shade out here? Uh, which position do you want to play? It would be more? easy if you asked, like, Berserker, Vulcan, and Berserker, me, you know? Think about it. Oh, it's me, obviously. <laughs> now, now, now I have to. Nah, I can't do this. <laughs> it's a tie. Yeah, it's a tie. I will say, though, me and Vulcan in 2020 spring were, like, we, I think we had the best record of all time. As a yes. team, that, that's yes. split, right? 17 and 1. Yeah, and then we didn't make Worlds somehow. That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not going to answer the question, can, but... Can we just uh, move on from this topic? Okay. Yes, yeah. Chat, oh, chat's going to answer it. Chat's going to answer it, but we're moving on from it as far as the cast goes. Oh, is. man. All right, well, we'll check back in with the chat later. See where their opinions lie. And if nothing else, you can just go with whatever they oh, yeah. said and pin the blame on them. I really care about their opinions, so thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, it's very important to contemplate <laughs> the Twitch chat hive mind. Uh, yeah. uh, fake God proxying up here with the Udir, as we see so many Udirs often do. The power of the champion to both spam the waves down and get away has been a big part of the popularity he's experienced in the top lane so far this split. No kills on the board for either side, but it is C9 up about five or 600 gold. Blabber now starting up the grubs. We can see no Ivern anywhere in the neighborhood because Shopify is focusing the other neutral objective at the same time. That first Drake Infernal here, five and a half minutes in. It'll be a nice and early one for them, but it will come at that three grub cost going the other way for C9. Yeah, I will say, I think the, the Dragon for grub trade is pretty good for Shopify. Okay. I think that they have a worse early game all around, so I think them getting a good trade like this is worth it. They're the scaling team, you would say. So the Dragon is the easiest win condition for the team that Gets out scale, right? Gets four mm -hmm. dragons by 25 minutes and then just win. Yeah. The grubs I, don't matter. That, sorry. Don't matter that much when you don't have like split pushing champs, right? Right, yeah. You, you have, have like Renekton. A or a Camille or something like that. So it's not that big of a deal, I think. You've got the Renekton and the Nico, which seem much more like they want to be a part of the bigger yeah. fights, opposed to Tristana yeah. and Udir, who mm -hmm. can both be very successful. Yeah, but this way, Shopify can be like, oh, we all have one dragon. Now we can give one and yeah. just mm. get more gold somewhere else, right? Whereas the best place for Shen to be would be like, oh, we have two dragons. Our opponents are forced to team fight. It's Nico has a flank, has a big old, you know, Max has a two M power spike or something like that. So I think so far it's pretty good for Shopify. Yeah. Not down too much gold. One K is decent, but not too shabby. I think overall I do like the Shopify comp. I I would be concerned though. Like I think Cloud Nine 
probably had a choice of whether they wanted first Drake or Grubs. Oh yeah. And and Blabber just picked the Grubs. I think part of that could be as Berserker might get engaged on. on here. Yeah. Might have to flash here. He's already dashed away. Zazel flashing to lock him down with the passive. The intention there would have been to follow it up with the dredge line, but Berserker having already got enough distance with a flash of his own means that Shopify can't really get the angle they were looking for. Yeah, no kill angle there. It almost feels like this will be C9 going for as many plates as possible because they just triple grubbed. They have prio in all three lanes and they yeah. need to cash it in now. Like if they don't get the plates, 100% it ends up being a bad choice. But I think that's just the priorities that Blabber and C9 have this early. Yeah, game. the grubs don't scale poorly. You know, if you get six grubs, it's, I mean, six of them, you get two of the grubs on the tower. It's not bad. You get more plate gold, you can get more items. But how are they going to win the game? Yeah. If they don't I get, agree. Yeah, if they're not going to stack for soul and fight dragons, then they need to get a Baron early. Mm -hmm. So I think. You know, all the games so far pretty good for Shopify. I think once they get to mid game and they can put his stun on side lane, he will beat both Nico and Iron Exxon in the morning one. And yep. then once the Iron joins the 2v2, I think that wins against both Nico and uh, the Kindred 2v2. So. And as we're moving through the game, we're also going to make sure that we're keeping track of how soon Blabber hits that critical mark yep. of the four stacks. Still only has one so far. Usually you want to make sure that you have that four break point by the time you get to the first big fight for the extra range to make sure that you're not stuck in so many bad spots. You already talked a little bit earlier, Zven, about how, especially against champions that have a yeet button like Tristana, <laughs> you don't have the same yeah. protection from the ulti, so the extra range very important. Yeah, he's got a Dorn's Blade here as well from Blabber. Um, so he wants to get... Okay, hang on. Uh-oh. Vulcan? He's good. He's oh, good. Yeah, he's good. He's a, it's a little dicey, but he's Excellent. good. Excellent. There he goes. Oh. Nice! The dredge line has oh, found Berserker. Now the chase is on. Cloud9's AD carry may not be long for this world, but the Lamb's respite keeps him alive. Berserker holds on. Blabber with the bus killed right there, denying us our fun. But now, still. That was a big play by Zazel. Yeah, into the bush as well. If but. they get first blood on B-Boy, that could have really turned things. It's still a nice chunk, right? The flash is still down. He's a little bit low, but I mean, he's actually going to catch the whole wave. I'd say that ultimate really saved a lot for C9. Yeah, the hex flash into the iron bush was kind of like, kind of sick. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, that's a cool play if it was on, on purpose, you know? If there was a bush there for that, that reason alone. So I guess not been having a good time against Nautilus this split. He had a disaster no. against FlyQuest, I believe it was, on yeah. the bush as well. He's gonna get some PTSD at this point. <laughs> he's, just gotta, he's gotta try to. Oh, maybe that's why they keep drafting, is so we can overcome that. <laughs> I will say, Joy Pion is making good use of the grubs so far. Getting himself two plates now and yeah. a 10 CS lead ish. Yeah, we're still at zero kills, and it's a 1,500 gold lead for yeah. C9 just from this lane dominance that you're talking about, as well as the extra plate taking capability from that first set of the grubs. You can see the gray hourglass in his top side. Pit. <laughs> that second set is coming up soon. Chad has decreed Berserker and Zven are the superior bot lane. Congratulations. That's recency bias, surely. You did mention the 17 and 1 Zven ball. Yeah, so you guys want to hear me or what? Could be a tie. I think people just think Berserker's better than me. And that's the disrespect. Of, that's kind of messed up. The disrespect. I guess he's all right. <laughs> oh, this could be six grubs. They're, yeah. they're sending the farm. I think it is six grubs. But they are, the team. they are also sending the whole squad there for the grubs. Don't think they have to send Vulcan up here for those. This might give B-Boy a single plate here. Yeah. Once they're facing. You can see a bunch of assist me pings coming out in the red side jungle of C9 now as they're saying, hey, this is kind of where we're going to have to answer. Berserker has been left down here to respond to the crash, but yes, yeah, six grubs for C9, ten and a half minutes in. Shopify should try to take control of this bot side here, so they can get a good, a favorable dragon fight. Oh, or just dive fast. Berserker. They just want to dive. They know there's no Kindred to save them this time. Berserker's gonna get bursted down. Zazel should die in response. It'll be a one for one here at the start, but first blood's over to B-Boys Kaisa. Daisy's tanking up the turret as Jojo's got half HP left. Vulcan has joined the fight with a bubble over the wall, but there's no damage to follow it up on B-Boy. So Shopify can get all of their men out. Still a very, very even trade. One for one at the end of the day, plus 1,000 gold for C9, same as it was before. Honestly, not that bad for C9, given that Shopify had, you know, it was their turn to play, and <laughs> this was what they got from it. One for one isn't that bad for C9. So I think C9 will take this. They got the grubs, and one for one is totally fine for them. Now they'll probably get the dragon as well, since Shopify used all three of their ults in jungle and bot lane. I think there's no way that uh, Shopify can fight this dragon at this point. Yeah, and I think Jojo's going to need to pay this forward as well. He's the one who's gotten the two plates. He's the one that got the first kill. He's now proto-belt first. So yeah. that's that's huge if they 
want to try and fight this dragon because they could actually get a really big fight. At the moment, I think Shopify just wants to avoid big fights. Right, especially you brought up the proto belt for the Nico. There's also Eclipse completed on the Renekton. That is two fully completed items on your two solo laners, which are naturally your highest level champions anyway. The power spike is real for these guys. Only person with a completed item on Shopify is the static shift for the Kai'Sa, but the Kai'Sa who had already just used the Killer Instinct, the ultimate's still not ready and available to use yet again. It's going to be harder to pilot one of these 5v5 fights from Shopify's side. Yeah, I think when you look at B-Boy versus Jojo Pune right now, the two fed guys in both teams, I think Jojo Pune is just so much stronger in a fight right now. Mm -hmm. He's got a completed boost, he's got the Proto Belt, much stronger than the uh, Static Shift, and he's playing Nico, level 10 Nico, versus level 7 Kai'Sa. I think he wins that every time of day, so I think Sina should try to force this dragon very soon. Yeah, at what point do you feel like the Kai'Sa turns on? Because there's so many different Kai'Sa builds now. So he's Static Shift first, Hail of Blades, yeah, so when he does goes, he get strong? He goes Halo Blades for the lane phase power, which I, I think I'm fine with. He's going Static Shift, so probably Ginsu is the second item here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't scale as well as some sort of like AP build or like a full right. crit build, but it's very strong on one and two items. I think mm -hmm. that's why okay. he looks to fight. But this game, he's not the late game insurance. Insanity is. So, that's the tryst. Yeah, still like the Kai'Sa is supposed to carry them through that. If they somehow. get this Drake, that's hugely that's disappointing for C9. That's a complete deal, I feel like, for yeah. Shopify. Not sure. Well, I was going for... An invade or some sorts, but getting crap. He already. Yeah. Oh, there was there was a. <laughs> I was fabulous right now. <laughs> oh man. Oh no. There was a mark earlier on the chickens, which Flavor just realized is no longer there. Ah, yeah, I mean, that's huge. I Shopify mean, is happy for that. Might man. get a mark on the crux in a couple seconds once the timer starts. On the it should be very soon. That would be like some sort of saving grace, but this is a, this feels not very good for C9. It honestly reminds me... Oh, it's one of the thick rumpets of the Crux. Yeah. Oh, Man, it reminds me of the C9 we've kind of seen all year, where they have these small advantages, like JoJo being 15 CS up, yeah. or the fact that they get six grubs, but then the next step of answering how you win the game, they don't have an answer for that. They're just like... Yeah, they just bought their Kraken Slayer, their Mandate, and the, um, the Storm is around Lucian, so they must have thought that the spikes they have weren't good enough. They needed more damage to win that fight. They also got the yeah. Eclipse on Fudge. But, but then at what point are you strong enough if it's not on these items? Yeah. Boogie. The Daisy running out of the brush, the extra Krug as part of the camp that Blabber wanted to run up there and take. So he knows that they were looking for maybe something, but now the presence of Cloud9 with Vulk and Blabber Jojo all down here together means that there's not really a play for Shopify to find. The yeah. game state has been pretty much this for the past 10 minutes. It's Cloud9 with a thousand gold lead. Nobody's really going crazy for the PvP yet, and I think a lot of it's what you guys were talking about with Shopify recognizing, hey, we're trying to scale, right? Like, we're not the 5v5 team. We're not the early game power team. They're just trying to avoid the fights, and Cloud9 aren't really forcing them, but the tidal wave comes out now, and B-Boy's going to eat most of the culling. Zazel steps in to make sure the last few bullets don't find it, but now the Nautilus has to be careful. Chunk onto both players from the bottom lane of Shopify means that C9 will force them back into their own jungle for now and continue applying pressure in mid lane. And Blabber's really sad because that was another denial there. I feel like <laughs> actually Boogie keeping Blabber on one mark yes, 14 it's, minutes into the game is really, really important. successful. But yeah, just Rufus can get down here. That's good. Of course, there's no wave clear on Shopify Rebellion, so they can't defend the tower, so there's a big wave and more people C9, so that's good. I thought Shopify was going to try to make a play for the bot tower and give the Herald, and I think C9 realized that, and they were like mm. trying to match them on bot side, mm. not, not give away the, the bot tower for the Herald. It might end up happening anyways, but C9 pushed them out of the jungle and took mid tower as a extra on top. And they might still be able to defend this bot tower here. Yeah. They can't really die much, can they? No, I don't think they can. Yeah, Boogie wanted the but root collar there, but... He thinks they can, so... All right. Okay, well, they got bot tower for the, um, the Herald anyways, but they got mid tower on top of it, and I think they might be able to get top tower as well at the end of this round. Okay, they are recalling it. Expecting no deer. Yeah. This might be too simplistic of a question, but who do you think wins? Uh, like, okay, how much of a gold lead does Cloud9 have to have by like 25 minutes in order to win the game? I mean, it's kind of like interesting because Lucian doesn't scale poorly necessarily, right? At six right. items, he's fine. He has like this mid game power hole where he doesn't do damage to tanks. Mm -hmm. But the Kinder can make up for that, similar to how the Chitana makes up for the Kai'Sa, right? Yeah. So it's, it's interesting that both teams have. One guy who scales really hard, the Kindred versus the Tristana. Yep. And then they have like all the, the tanks and the setups, right? The Ivern and the Nami are both doing the enchanting, while the top laners are doing the tanking. So I think honestly, late game, Cena can be fine as long as Blabber is in a good spot. I guess that makes sense. It's just gonna be by execution, I think. But I think that Shopify will run the game on side lane once they get Tristana two items. I think he can just jump on top of uh, Jordan's head and just tank his damage with lifesteal. Yeah. And I think the 2v2 is winning for Shopify mid jungle on side lane, like what they're doing right here, trying to 2v2, you know, cover insanity, get him his farm. 
and it's going to be pretty hard for them to kill Fake God too. Frozen Heart Rush, Ninja Tabi, yeah, because Jojo doesn't really want to catch Fake God with any of his burst, so it's no. pretty much all on the Kindred and the Lucian to try and take. We him. had this joke in C9 that Berserker would always buy fire cannon against tanks no matter what, and he wouldn't do damage to them. I asked him one day why. He told me it's my signature item. <laughs> it's my signature <laughs> item. Signature Rapid item. Fire cannon. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was, like, I was my blood. I was stun locked. <laughs> why, why don't you just buy like you know Lord Dominic or something or like Cycle Sword at least seconds like signature? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, right. How else will they know it's him? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or like one time he bought like he was saying Jinx. He bought like Gale Force, Fire Cannon, Fleet against double tanks. Hang on. Oh boy, Zazel immediately finding an engage here on Blabber, but now he's got to be careful. The calling from Berserker just gonna burst this guy down. Blabber ends up taking the kill, and Fudge has made his way into the fight. The Dominus is ready, but Shopify disengage after that. They have lost one, and now Insanity's under pressure. Fudge going in, but doesn't really find a whole lot. The mobility of the Tristana can disengage that. But importantly, Jojo and Fudge now have free reign to knock down this Tier 1 turret here in the top side. Demolish, plus the baby grubbies. This thing's not long for this world, and C9 is going to go up to a 2,500 gold lead. Yeah, I'm not sure what Shopify was trying to accomplish there, uh, being... So far away from the towers. <laughs> <laughs> There's one place you're supposed to be. Yeah, I think they should be playing through insanity on side lanes. I think they shouldn't be trying to scrap mid like that. Um, I really think their only condition is playing through insanity at this point. Just to be doing with him. They might he, get a fast play on Dragon here though, because the a lot of the ultimates are down for C9. Blabber would want to steal us, but he's got no ult and no one else is here to go in first. A little heist, perhaps. Okay, this okay. is interesting. That's a that's an eco. They want to go for it. The Ivern brushes are up. Fake out in the middle, but Jojo goes in for the engage. He finds Boogie. The burst isn't there in time to kill him, and now Zazel's got to try to play Interceptor. Jojo getting himself back here yet again. He's grabbing the kill on Zazel, but they're going to trade one for one. The Drake is still alive as C9 wants to get the hell away, and they're going to secure the Drake while they do it. They've lost Blabber. They've lost Jojo. They've only traded it back for Zazel. So Shopify wins the fight. C9 wins the Drake. This is spicy. Thank goodness Blabber got that smite, <laughs> because if they're sole point against that, that's a disaster. Jojo looks looked like he had a good engage, but then the fact that he gives the bounty back to Shopify and the dragon was still a flip, that was just a missed timer from Cloud9. They've been slow to every Drake today. There was no follow-up at all. He flashed in, hit the hit B-boy, but there was nothing else. There was no cooling, no Nami wave. There was nothing there. Yeah, well, it's... they don't even have the cooldowns because they used yeah. them in the earlier fight. Actually, it didn't even be with Boogie who he hits. It was kind of a lackluster didn't get engage. Yeah, he didn't yeah. B-boy. I got B-boy and, uh, or sorry, Boogie and B-boy mixed up. If you don't catch the Kai'Sa or the Trist, it's uh, not a great all. Yeah, and even if he had hit Boogie, I mean, the B-boy, it, there wasn't any follow-up anyways. There was a Nami ulti, no calling, no flank from Fudge, no nothing. So, yeah, pretty bad fight for C9, not gonna lie. They chunked Boogie enough that it wasn't even a smite flip, though. He wasn't even in range to get the smite, so at least right. they were able to secure that. Like but... you mentioned, thank goodness the Blabber got the dragon for yeah. C9. Otherwise, it would be very silent right now in the comms. <laughs> it's always the worst when you, when you get ace in team fights and you're like, oh. There's just nobody's got anything to say. And then one is like, all right, guys, let's uh, go topside. <laughs> like, let's go somewhere and get some work done. Let's try to get something Sounds going good, again. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> or like when you die in lane, someone's like, it's fine. No, it's not fine. <laughs> it's like, it's we're, so, you're at, it's, it's so absolute cope. <laughs> Total cope. Yeah. We've got Blabber with three stacks now on the Kindred. So one away from being able to get that first range bonus. Baron now making his way onto Summoner's Rift. As Zazel trying to see if he might be able to go fish in here. No, Vulcan had just enough distance. So there's not an opportunity to fire off that dredge line. Still three minutes until our next Drake spawns. We'll see how that fight ends up shaping up by the time we get there. But checking in on item power spikes, it is the Ginsu second fully completed now for the Kai'Sa. Ivern gets to enjoy shopping at the thrift store the entire time as a jungler. <laughs> he just buys this cheap garbage that's made for support. So he's also got that second item power spike way before Blabber has one. And Sandy's got to have a full item soon. I feel like he had a vamp separate like 10 minutes ago. It's got to be very close. 1,600 gold in his inventory yeah. right now. Okay. What is he buying with that? The long sword and the vamp scepter. Steel. Is now, it... What would the second item be here? Because shield bow is, is shield? A, a pickaxe. Oh, okay. Quick cloak, right? While BT is a BF sword and a quick cloak. I mean, he Maybe could... he's buying a Voric and just has like a power spike of vamp scepter in there, you know, for the silent. Yeah, he might mm. just have it because he's getting like a, a little poked up by Jojo. Yeah. Of course, no pink ward. Typical mid laner smell. I hate those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, had, I had to beg Eminence to buy a pink ward. It was tragic, man. Hey, it's the refillable potion is very yeah. important. He buys the Vamp Scepter and the Fleetwood work and the Dorn's Blade. So he needs more life steal with the, the potion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure, man. You gotta have that extra HP. So here we have the C9 Classic called a, a, a Decoy Herald. Okay. You send a Herald to his death for nothing. <laughs> it's the... <laughs> Just straight out of the playbook, send right? Send your whole team to Herald to do this with it. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> all, all we have. So what do you think the comms are for C9 right now? How are they trying to set up the next play? Because it definitely feels like they are technically in control of the game and Shopify yeah. has to react to them, but Cloud9 hasn't been able to pull much off. Yeah, I think the first thing they ask is what went wrong? Like, how do we have such a bad dragon fight? Should we have given it? Should we have had TP flanks for Jojo Pion? Where's the follow-up? Should right. Fudge be on a flank? Like, you have to, like, kind of, like, problem false, problem solve in-game, mm -hmm. right? Like, what went wrong in this team fight? How do we uh, make the next one better? Because exactly. it's going to happen in a minute. Exactly. Talk about next dragon fight in 120 minutes from now. Do we fight this one? Do we have better set up? What's the issue? So would you have wanted to see a more aggressive early game from Cloud9 with how they had such winning lanes across the board, but we got to, what, 14 minutes? Like, plates fell and the score was 1-1. One one. Yeah, there was a time where Jojo had CDR shoes and his proto belt, and Yo had stack shift. Second dragon timing, and they just gave it. I think that was the best out of fight, from my perspective at least. But you know, obviously felt like they needed to complete their items in jungle. Blabber trying to help Fudge get this kill on Fake Up, but it's Udyr, man. He just runs just away. Walks it, walks yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, he just walks That's in the other the direction. Baron start right now. And they have damage. Oh, uh, yeah. Have yeah. yeah. Okay, Shopify onto the Baron. It's already down to 5k. It's Blabber dead. is nowhere nearby. Zazel goes in for the dredge line on Jojo. Even if he dies, Jojo's not going to find the team fight angle now. Baron drops, but so does the Nautilus. Now, Fake God's got to be careful here on the front line. C9 are trying to keep these guys trapped. Oh, Boogie forward. flashes back <laughs> over the wall. B-Boy flashes back over the wall. Fake God has no flash. <laughs> Udir is dead. The sacrificial tiger, bear, phoenix, turtle, whatever all of those animals together are. It's a Baron in exchange for two. Shopify catch C9 sleeping. Not so bad though, like the uh, Baron for two kills is not bad at all. Now just give up the dragon and try to get top tower perhaps. And yeah, it's not it, gonna be too bad for Shopify. It simplifies the decision making for the game because they're gonna be dead by the time the dragon's up. Blabber's just gonna get the second dragon. They're still 10 minutes away from oh. potential soul and they're gonna keep the gold even. It's, oh, I, I feel like that's a weirdly neutral trade because Shopify might have been able to win a third dragon fight. Instead, they preempted. He's got the marks too on Kindred. He's got his fifth mark, I believe. So, yep. Online. Yep. Not too bad. I think. This series where both teams are like, ah, eh, that's fine. Yeah. So everybody takes the, they get like a seven minute, you know, breather, mm -hmm. so to speak, where mm -hmm. they can just farm and, and chill. While C9 gets a dragon, they're like, eh, it's okay. Yeah, I do wonder if Shopify is going to be feeling any pressure now, though, because just the stakes for this game, the fact that oh, we yeah. had the energy loss earlier, Shopify does need to win for their season to continue. Right. This could be the last spring split game they play if they end up losing, but if they win, there's an outside chance they'd just be in playoffs without tiebreakers. A win will guarantee them at least a tiebreaker for playoffs, but a, a win is just, I'd say, much bigger for Shopify than it is for Cloud9. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because C9 is still going into playoffs, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, Shopify does not want to end their split here today. They have the Baron for another minute and 20 seconds. The Baron power play is still currently lower than the amount of gold you get for killing Baron, so you'd like to see them accomplish at least something more with it. Yeah, I saw big damage there from Zerker onto Big God. Black cover does an actual damage. <laughs> hey, that's signature damage. That's signature damage. Right <laughs> they know where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> the Lucian rapid fire cannon. I will say it is pretty standard build on Lucian fire, fire cannon second. It's yeah. It's just fun, you know, to see him. Yeah, yeah, just, 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 just banter. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just banter. banter. He's going for low dominance now, so maybe he heard me. There, there it is. Exactly. He could tell. He oh. could tell what's going on here. As now Boogie getting caught out. The burst damage goes through, but Redemption saves him just in the nick of time. Now Vulcan's bursted down by B-Boy, and Insanity finds a nice double knockback. Fake God's made his way in. It's a double kill back over to B-Boy. Shopify Rebellion are steamrolling Cloud9 as Fudge tries to get away, but Shopify's hungry for dessert. The lizard is burning, and Shopify's turning their attention right back into the top lane. That was a disaster for Cloud9. What a massive fight there for Shopify. 3-0-3 three, three on B-Boy's Kaisen now. Two items going on three. They still have a little bit of Baron buff well to get turrets after the push, and they have their first big goal lead of the game. Disaster. They didn't have enough damage to kill him here. They thought they had enough damage to Vulcan and uh, Judgment alone, but just oh, the redemption. Just barely. B-Boy. Just barely, man. Yeah. And then he's still a full high burn for the rest the, of the, the double ult here from Insanity. That was sick. The insect yeah. play. I like that a lot. Berserker, or also Blabber doesn't get his ult off before he dies Look either. Look at B-Boy, untouched the whole fight. Beautiful. That's the dream. He just turned on there, right there. On a silver platter, just like that. So that is the second time now, this game. The first one being that fight back in the Drake pit where Jojo only gets the ulti on Boogie, that we have seen a solo Nico ulti on Ivern that doesn't kill him.
The yeah. dragon, dragon fight was bad, but this time I think it was fair enough. He probably had the damage to kill him mm -hmm. with the Vulcan's, you know, ult and his Q. The man, the damage is probably kind of big, so this was bad. this was not that bad. I think just a bad judgment call on the damage mm. they had. But yeah. the dragon was very bad. I agree. I agree with that. Yeah, Bloodthirster did eventually come through for insanity, yeah. but it was the third item, so he was just delaying it. This... I do want to mention B-Boy, though, because <laughs> you were mentioning <laughs> that he's having such a big split. It's not like he's some rookie. He's bro, been. I don't even look know. At this. I don't look even at know these half of these teams, bro. <laughs> yeah. What is the one 20, 21, 2022? What is that? Inactive. Oh, oh. I, I want to no. say like Furiosa. I don't know either, man. What is the one? Furious? Oh, no, that so Furious is before. Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. We're, we're embarrassing ourselves uh, at the moment. But <laughs> I was going to say, why are you guys drawing attention to this? <laughs> Just <laughs> because gotta... that's how, like, to me, this is how committed B-Boy is to competitive League of Legends. The fact that he's had to play in this many different regions with this many yeah. different teams and still now, like, he needs to win to go into playoffs. Like, yeah. he wants this so much. And I think he's actually been playing really well this split. Yeah. So he's been a sleeper MVP for sure. Well, we've got the third item power spikes for both of the marksmen on the side of Shopify. You guys already mentioned the Quick Blades, the Bloodthirster there for the Tristana. Nashor's Tooth completed now for the Kai'Sa. These two are so scary if they are left untouched like we saw in the last fight. Yeah, this is the point where Insanity goes side lane and he walks forward. The other walks backwards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no... It's Tristana when she's fed, man. It's tough. I think if Insanity right takes Dota Pune and Dota Pune hits all his spells perfectly, maximum net damage, he still loses. Mm. It doesn't matter anymore if he hits all his spells or not. He will lose only one. It's 100 to 0 or and, just lose? But yeah, it's it's Blabber kills him or Blabber kills him with some sort of like a gank or no one mm. kills him. Because the Iron Shields, the BT, yeah, the, fair. the Flash, the W, the knockback. He's with the so strong. Team. Even if you he, if he see George being press ult, he just ults him back and then nothing happens, right? So it's, at this point, it's very hard for C9 to fight because Insanity will always be pushing first and moving first, like you see here. He'll, he's here, but Fudge is not here. Fudge can't even push his way right now. Look at him. He's afraid of getting ganked by uh, Insanity. Yeah. Let's catch it defensively. I, I'm a little interested that Shopify is on this side of the map. Baron and Dragon are coming up at very similar timers, but I'd almost want to say like they should set up at the Drake because the Soul is ultimately how they're going to win. That's... And I think they have enough power that they can bully. The Soul is pretty weak, though, for both team comps. They aren't very ultimate reliant, I suppose. Mm. So that could be their, their well, top process. If they get Baron in the game in one push, perhaps. Fair. Big damage here. Yeah, not as much as you'd like. It's Lord Dominic, so we got that in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Letting them know. Letting them know, but now the engage coming out from Zazel. The catch, the damage. Jojo barely gets away back in the Lamb's Rest, but looking to keep him from the lock of the massive counter attack. Jojo Pune again with the clutch for C9. Is that how it ends? No way. Out of nowhere, just like that. Can't think I clear the wave. Okay, it's a bit of a burn. What an insane play there. So he. He, he got, got knocked out of the ulti by the Shana ult. Somehow didn't dive to the bomb, and then he got back in with his... And it flashed until... So, I think he proto-belted into the Kindred ult without yeah, using flashed. Stopwatch, and then flashed in to land the real ult. Yeah, Insanity had to make sure that the bomb actually explodes at the end of the ultimate by hitting it two times first, and then ulting him. Oh, man. Wow, that was such a close fight, but... Man, Trojan has been really showing up. Like, yeah. I will say, the first dragon fight was bad. The, the pick in the blue jungle was bad as well. But it's always him. Yeah. It's he's the clutch him. factor. Yes. He's the difference. It's always him who makes the plays, which is good to see from in that you know, no matter what happens, he doesn't get, you know, afraid to make big plays. Okay, we're seeing well, exactly what happened. Really good though. Third Drake. He gets hooked. It looks like they're gonna be able to one shot him. And then let's see if we had it right. He gets ulted out with Kindred being up. Yeah, he proto belts in to stay alive, and then just starts channeling his ultimate. Flashes in with, he had like 50 health before that went off. Yeah. That's, I mean, those are some slim margins. Yeah, that's. The triple replay. Damn. Oh my god. Perfect would have been to stop off right after yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been like a him moment for sure. Man, JoJo again in one of these game states where things are turning against C9. We had just got done talking about how hard it is to win these fights and find the angles where you can deal with these mm -hmm. two fed marksmen. And there it was, JoJo finding that massive ulti to get C9 the Baron. They're up 3,000 gold now, and they've got the Baron for another minute and 45 seconds. They're already at plus 2,400 gold from it now that that bottom lane tier 2 has been knocked down. And Shopify, everything's different now. They're on the back foot. Yeah, they're going to hate that. If this is what loses in the game. They oh, yeah. the dragon, though. While C9 took the Baron, they got the dragon. Mm -hmm. They have three dragons now, soul point. And B-Boy still is strong. So is Sandy. Like, I still think if 
Strong part goes back to the same game plan they had before this moment. Nothing has really changed too much. Yeah, I think so. I feel, still think that Insanity will win side lane against anyone. He will still be pushing. So I think they can still just mm -hmm. give back to the same game plan they had before. Yeah, I think Blabber Berserker are going to be at a point where they can start making Fake God a little bit more paper. Yeah. Like they're going to have enough damage. Blabber especially. Yeah, because how many marks is he at now? He's at seven. I don't really like the, the Hurricane though. I don't feel like that's a lot of value in this game. Mm. But um, I mean, if you're Fake God, you just go Randuin's here, just become Turbo Tank. Yeah, but he's been buying that. He's buying something that looks like a, a Jock Show or a Night's Vow mm. or something. I mean, Night's Vow for B-Boy could be really strong. That yeah. happens really would be good as well, yeah. I think that, that's good. It's the double crit champs. It's kind of a... I think it's really about Cloud9 holding position here. So, like, yes, they have Baron yeah. for 43 more seconds. I think they're going to want this turret for gold. But then, like, finding a way to keep deep wards and stop Shopify from having a good setup on the next Drake is going to have to be top of mind for them. The Grub's coming in big here for C9. Getting them two towers now. That's true. They made this Baron work. 2,000 gold so far from the Baron buff. They might get top tower as well. They have a pretty good siege with the Kindred and the Lucian range at this point. Shopify doesn't have a lot of wave clear. They can't really defend no. the towers very well. Baron still for another 15 seconds. Nami Tidal Wave goes out. Fake God's going to explode. Barely survives thanks to the redemption there at the very end as the Ignite was ticking on him. But now you got Jojo getting bursted pretty low. Stasis to keep himself alive. Lamb's Respite to keep himself alive. Er. <laughs> and C9 walks out with all five of their dudes still breathing. Alive -er. Yeah. <laughs> the first one kept you alive. The second wait, one wait, kept wait. you oh. more alive. Boogie's nearly dead. Shopify trying to get away now. As the tier two turret's gonna be forced out of Berserker's ready to go in. Zazel goes straight to his death. Shopify in a 4v5. C9 still pushing up. The Baron's out though, and that is a flash from Berserker. You have to get the tower here, or it's not actually that worth it, I think. Ah. It, honestly, it's not that bad for Shopify. They got the flash on Lucian and Kindred from this fight, and they only lost one guy. You're right. And Dragon spawning in two minutes, so they won't have flashes on two of their biggest carries. It, it sounds like cope, but actually it's not too bad at this yeah. point in the game to trade your, your life for a flash. Quick reminder, LCS playoffs are going to be starting Thursday, Friday, and then also being played on Saturday, Sunday, so four days of big LCS. Week. The Thursday, oh. Friday games are big, big games too. Those are the upper brackets, so that's going to be the two versus three game and the one versus four game on Thursday and Friday. But watching this one more time, I agree that overall, the cope of they use flashes is going to work, but I think Cloud9 saw a chance to potentially win the game. Like if yes, the spike yes. goes correctly, they can get a few more kills and maybe end the game, but... I think Berserker didn't have to flash the hook at the end there. I think you just uh, have yeah. tanked it and then just kept going with the cooling afterwards. I think he had to cool him back up at the end of this, this replay. I feel like there was more to get there. This is my moment right here. I feel like you can kill everyone. Plays as well. Dashes forward. Sure it's on flash it. the hook, but I feel like oh, no, one, yeah. no one will kill him there if he doesn't flash it, right? And he had the old still to go. Perhaps. Yeah. Instead we will, of, we instead will of never know. back even, you maybe exactly, go forward, maybe yeah. the Nami starts to the hook. Down. No one can kill him anyways, right? D-Boy couldn't 1v5. It's kind of jumped out at the same time. We got the dragon set up now, though. 45 seconds. They have Fake God pushing bot. They still have all their inhibitor turrets, so they don't really have to worry that much. Insanity can even catch waves and teleport, or Fake God can catch waves and teleport if they need. This is going to be a really big dragon fight. I know the Cloud Soul is not the be-all, end-all for these comps, but it's yeah, still yeah. a big bump of power. They really need to get Jordan in either a flank or a Teak ward. So far, they don't have those. They might just go down mid here and give the soul yeah. to get the base. They could push mid and top here at the same time and just go for twin hips. They're tipping for yeah. going for it. C9 just wants to hard force this. They're saying if you're going to go after the Drake, it's not even spawning for another 15 seconds. C9, brute force down the tier 3 turret. Fake God coming around from the flank. Jojo flanked the knock up on 3 again. The angle is there. The burst is down. And Shopify's already lost two men, but Jojo expires too. Oh. Now Fudge cuts down B-Boy in the 1v1. And Insanity needs to mop him up. A double kill for Blabber. And only Insanity stands on Shopify Rebellion. A TP to try to bring himself back into defend in time. Insanity has to try to hold this somehow. I don't think he can. 280 carries out of support guy. and the six grubs. It's tough, man. Insanity flashes away from the bubble from the Nami. He wants oh, the burst on Blabber. The bomb's still strapped to his head. Kendrick, oh. he dies with a turret shot. Insanity's defense Wait, will hold the line. This is huge. And go for Dragon now, maybe. I think he actually might be able to one, one to them here at Dragon. Berserker. Oh, good blue trinket from Insanity. He smells them. Right this is this is crazy, man. Insanity oh. keeping the game, keeping the split alive for Shopify Rebellion. Fake has TP. They were to TP to the Dragon here or to the Baron or both. I mean, it really felt like this, this was actually the end. This has to be a massive misplay from C9. There's no way he can win this 1v3 here. Turret goes on. Turret Blabber. Blabber off sinker. One guy dashes out. One guy jumps in. They could have had it. I they think if C9 yeah. properly, Even it's over. Even the towers alone would have been enough, I think. All right. Shopify back out on the map. The Drake is alive. That is a soul if they claim it. 
The Baron also back up there in the top lane. Nami Wave flies out. As Fake God looks for potential angle here. Remember, Blabber's still dead for another five seconds. Shopify are walking over to Baron, but they gotta remember, there's super minions pushing down mid lane. The Nexus only has one turret left guarding it. Shopify cannot just give away full they're, mid lane priority to Cloud9. They're losing 4v5 while Blabber is dead. Yeah. Uh, hello, guys. It's, it's, it's time to go. Go hit the dragon or hit the Baron. Just do something. Yeah, I thought they were going to run straight to dragon there and just flip a fight. Yeah. One, one big thing about that last fight, though, is Fudge just completely mauled people. Like, yeah. he completely 1v1'd mm -hmm. him in the backside. So this Kai'Sa that still hasn't completed Death Cap just isn't strong enough. Blabber's going to pick this up for free. That was a window. I think that was a window where Shopify could have capitalized, but... I think they were afraid of the open Nexus situation to actually go for Drake. Yeah, perhaps that's what's... Exactly. Yeah, three to though. three. Three to three on the Drakes now. So next one's stolen no matter what. <laughs> you just mentioned the death cap not being completed yet, Jat. And right after you it said is. it, it was purchased from B-Boy. So four item power spike there for the Kai'Sa. You can see the Tristana from Insanity now also having his. This game is going all the way. Like, even though it's a 7,000 gold lead for C9, mm. Shopify can still win a fight depending on the execution. I have some Jat stats here. How many games have we seen this split so far? with six dragons being killed. So this week, all of them. Like, there's, yeah, I feel like I've seen this movies before. Yeah, it's happened so much. It's a little bit ridiculous. And it's at the level of parity we have in this league. Teams aren't blowing each other out early game. Like, we said Cloud9 is the best early game team in the league. They're almost 500. 100 Thieves is the worst early game they team are? in the league. They're first place. And that's how close we are. Because, like, worst is, is relative, right? They're all pretty <laughs> even with it at 15 minutes. So that we end up true. getting these really close games. Oh man, Shopify are just dedicated to the... We've got an ARAM, boys. They've got to defend mid. They do not want to allow C9 to try to force this oh down God, mid lane. Insanity oh. has lost half his HP. C9's gonna force him back with a calling. Also chewing through Fake God down to two thirds HP here on the Udyr as the redemption is necessary to keep Shopify healthy enough. C9 potentially thinking about where they could go with that chunk. The healing is enough to get Insanity. Fake God, everybody's still doing good enough on the side of Shopify to not have to head back to Fountain, but both neutral objectives are up. Well, just the Baron for now, I guess. Sorry, I misspoke. I was thinking about earlier where the Drake is there. <laughs> We've got the one neutral objective that's very important still up. And at the rate this is going, the Dragon's going to be back up before either team leaves mid lane. Lucian had a bit of a power hole early in the game, but now mm. he's fully online. He's some actual so damage strong. Now. So strong. He's also got the Serpent's Fang as the final item to cut through some of the shielding coming out from the Udyr, the Nautilus, the Ivern. The Baron's already down that's to so 2,000 fast. HP. It's going to be claimed by C9 before Shopify can even get into the area. And because there's nothing else for Shopify to take, C9 are feeling good about making that call. Blabber is actually so strong. 308 CS, 11 oh, kindred sucks. marks. Yeah. What's that range? Like 700 at this point? Jojo! Huge engage! Finds two, but now B-Boy goes back over the wall with the killer instinct, looking to take him down! Blabber's here on the front, and Lamb's reference already no used! B-Boy finds the kill on Jojo! What looked like it might have been the angle here for Cloud9! It's Shopify's fight to keep going! A snipe! Nearly kills Blabber, but he barely hangs on! B-Boy making the outplay against Jojo's engagement, but Zerker goes in looking for the 1v4! Vulcan gets the kill on Fake God, but it's gonna oh be traded God. back against Berserker! Can I just push on mid here? They yep. can push a lot, but they don't yep. have Baron, so Blabber, Fudge, and Vulcan can probably suicide to keep these waves it's alive. Probably just a few towers, yeah. They have oh two AD carries, though, and Zazel could tank. Dude, There's a chance. Was, that was insane by Insanity. The ulti over the wall into B-Boy's ultimate, chasing him over and finishing him off. That was actually a crazy combo. Might have been not on purpose, but that was sick. Okay, I mean, they, they definitely ran out of minions. Yeah, just one tower, two towers. Wow. Man, that felt like the moment <laughs> what a game. right there to win, if there ever was a moment. I was literally checking Blabber's range at 625. I missed the start. I just realized that's how fast it happened. We haven't had a single fight this game that wasn't either Jordi Buren engaging or getting engaged on. Yeah. It starts ends with him, <laughs> no matter what. It's always him. Okay, I mean, it looks so good. That was so fast. Cool. That was such a nice hold by Sanity. He saw it coming, I think. That has to be prediction. Yeah, and I mean, then B Boy instantly going to yeah, chase him he down. He saw his moment. Beautiful. Killer instinct, super nice. At this point, it's, it's over for C9. They can't fight back at this point until Fake Up goes way too deep here. I actually can't believe that W didn't kill yeah. on the Blabber in the back. Yeah. With a death cap, Kaisa? I mean, he's like half and half, right? He doesn't really yeah. have the full poke build. He doesn't have the full DPS build either. True. It was really important there that Fake God got that punch on Berserker right before he died to stun him. <laughs> Guarantee that it's a one for one. Fudge completing the Sterics gauge. Renekton now full build for the side of C9. Isn't it crazy that you can play a whole split of LCS and then whether or not you go to playoffs or your split is over can be like, oh yeah, that one frame that one where single. Fake God auto attacked Berserker or like that one missed mm -hmm. W. That one time Dorkun got like, wow. the Kindred ulti. 
The culling is just a Gatling gun at this point. Zazel trying to hook away to safety. No, Berserker got him. That might just be the end of the game right now as Insanity has to disengage and B-Boy's running to the safety of the tier three turret. C9 have the Nexus in their eyes. It is only one turret left to protect it. Whoa. Berserker, he wanted to go, but now he got got. Oh. Jojo with the rest to C9, still looking maybe for an angle here. It's still 4v4. Berserker was so hungry for it. Oh. Bro, the dragon is spawning in 10 seconds as well. It's going to be a solo for Silver Fire. Or? Sven, the, well, they have the Baron buff just ending. They have them pushed in. But surely, yeah, the, the death timer difference between Berserker and Zazel, they it's, should just push through mid, yeah, go yeah. towards Drake and get it. Death timers and the importance as well. I think Berserker's a little bit more important than Zazel, even if they're both alive. Does Jojo go for a fight here to contest? Does he? This is... Who has oh, damage? yeah, they're, they're on the brush. They're just setting up inside the control ward. Fake God's the only one here who's going to face check it. He stays alive for now when he gets away. The Insanity knocking them out. Yeah, there's just not enough damage to kill Fake God. There's not enough damage to do anything to the Cloud9 players. I was just Soul. preparing my Sucker's back speech. I was thinking in my head, the MVP is, he's back, he's so back, and he's going to keep pressing down, I'm like, no. So, we, uh, yesterday, the day before, we asked questions about, is Berserker him? Talking about, you know, is he that guy? He thought he was that guy. I thought he was him. Right here. Oh. He was not I'm that guy. I gotta credit B-Boy, though, he was channeling the W as Berserker goes for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh man, I'm in thing. <laughs> That's my face as well. <laughs> B-Boy had all his buttons up. Yeah. He just got him. You never dash and flash in a solution. You typically just... <laughs> that was definitely... I've, I have seen Raz do that exact play before. Why that was Raz over there? That's kind of messed up. No, no, no it's, it, there's a scale from Faker to Raz. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you ever played a game with Raz? No, thankfully. Okay, that's. I was gonna say that's why you asked the question. Once you play one game with Raz, and you will realize why Raz is. <laughs> we, we love you, Raz. It's all banter. It's all banter. I have played with Faker, however. Well, against him. Oh, that's what? not so nice. Yeah, yeah. Probably you understand why he's at that I end. I will say, the... out of the twelve or thirteen games against Faker, I've won one. That's, that's more than bad. most people have. <laughs> that, that's more than most people. Yeah. <laughs> I think we take those. I mean, we're moving towards item cap. Berserker has been six items. B boys yeah. five and a half. Somehow B boys not full build. I don't know yeah. how. Three sixty CS six kills. That is a good question. His stuff's super ex more expensive. Yeah, his stuff's super expensive, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's through the fire cannon. I mean, actually, no, they are all expensive. I don't know. Three K plus everything for Berserker besides the serpent fang. Yeah, we got. Yeah, I, I can't. I don't know the item gold. Yeah, I think everything they're buying is three K plus besides the. Um, yeah, maybe he's just drunk on potions because they've been on the brink of death. A lot of potions. <laughs> so he's just been he's thirsty. spending 500 just, gold Just sipping time. potions all like, game long. Let's get, let's fight this next one. This is the most important fight. <laughs> I, I buy a potion. Next fight, this is the most important one. Well, the big takeaway from that is just this gold lead for C9 is 8,000 gold means yeah. less and less as we keep going. It's kind of going for the Terminus instead of the Lord Dominic's as his pen item. It's kind of interesting. I feel mm -hmm. like the Dominic's crit plus pen is better than the on hit plus mm. pen at this point. It will give you maximum crit. Or yeah. armpen as well. I mean, I guess I think... a little bit of defensive stats from Terminus is not bad at this point in the game. You know, gets like 30 armor and MR at this point, I suppose. Yeah, I, I could see that. Maybe he's also just going for the squishies. He's like, someone else can take care of Fudge. But they, they're so much faster with the soul, but I, it's still Cloud9 with control here. Yeah. I I, like I've seen Berserker ult someone down mid like 20 <laughs> times this, this, this fight. And every time Fate got tanks it with Hazel and a shield from Boogie. But the thing that was different that time, Zazel uses the dredge line out immediately because he remembers how fast he died the last time. You can look at Fudge's position though. Fudge is looking for a potential wrap around. The only thing that matters is Jordan Pion. It yep. all Such starts with him and it ends with him as well. Every time it's W, everyone knows it could be the real one. You gotta respect it, yeah, man. There's so much pressure on him to make the fight because he's the only one in the whole game that has an engage button at this point. I think I was getting low-key chunked a little bit. He's down about 1,500 health just from little tags from the Rapid Fire Cannon yeah. on Berserker. Mm -hmm. They, they want to be able to get in position of this Baron, but they just can't seem to push Cloud9 out of mid lane. They're trapped in this they, endless mid lane they, cycle. They can't move because the moment they move anywhere else in the, in the mid lane, it's you know, his Baron. Yeah. So then they'll be forced to TP anyway, so why would you not just stay here, right? Because they, they really just, okay, has they all started the, it. Yeah. yeah. They started it. Just, just, Shopify just go in. Okay, Shopify have to try to answer this. C9 got the Baron already down to one third HP. They want to just finish this one off. Boogie and Fake God trying to make an entry, but the Baron is already going to be secured by Fudge of all people. Fake God and the rest of Shopify still seeing if there's a way, an angle to try to play the fight. Fudge wants to get away. Fake God chasing after him. Insanity coming around on the side, but the calling nearly cuts him down. Berserker forces Shopify back, but the Boy's still looking for a snipe. Not gonna get it. 
Did you see Jojo leaving his clone in the bush, made fake god, and everyone like double take? Yeah. Like they were so afraid of checking that Baron. Really well played by C9 to get it there. Shopify, second time this game alone, they just given a Baron. Yeah. GA for Berserker. Who needs boots? Yeah. How do you stand on GA versus boots? Oh, so. I'm not going to answer that question okay. at all because I don't actually have an opinion. I, I play Skarner. Skarner doesn't build Guardian Angel. I hate but I, I, Yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up for you. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyways, move on. Well, okay. What I was going to get at is the critical importance of the timers here because if Cloud9 doesn't manage to end on this, they still have Baron for the next two minutes. The Elder spawns mm. in under that timer. So C9 has control over the entire Rift up until the game-ending buff spawns. Guaranteed. If they don't feel that they can hard force this, they don't have to. It's true. Even if they don't get the Nexus Towers or the Nexus, they can just get two in hips and then go for the Elder Rake, a good fight. They will have control of the area, guaranteed. Give a good fight to Jordi Pune. There's no way. It's just a so stand off. Zaylil doesn't want to hook in because they're going to... He will die one shot. Yeah, he he'll yeah. die one shot. They're going to get the in-hip for free. I wonder if they just hold and try and get the Nexus turret too. Like, if, if, if they can the, just hold this pattern. If the hook isn't like a game winning, he will just ult someone and then Jordi flash in and kill everyone. Yep. It's a game-winning or game-losing hook, most likely. Shopify trying to hold on to the last Nexus turret. There they go. They're looking to find the bird, but the Lamb's respite is going to keep C9 alive. Jojo's ult, he doesn't hit anybody. That could be huge, but now C9 is looking to fight on back. B-Boy into the back line, but he ain't going to find the kills here just yet. It's nobody dead on Cloud9, but Zerker trying to come back now with the Guardian Angel as C9 disengages. A one-for-one -one trade, but it's Berserker for Zazel, and now C9 is going to try to run. They lock down Fake God, but Shopify Rebellion are in hot pursuit. Cloud Blabber Soul. and Fudge both looking to recall. Cloud Soul gives 20% move speed without your ult even being cast. Boogie flashing in for the root collar, but he doesn't hit it. There's your Void Seeker. Fake God still going. He's flying like a bat out of hell. Shopify Rebellion find another. Berserker dead. 35 seconds still on that clock. Shopify with a 4v3. Jojo, the Nico ulti, I believe, is almost ready to go again. Shopify still pushing. Daisy, back on the map. They want it. They want to try and end, but they just can't get the minions to the turret. <laughs> Come on, Shopify. Let's see what you got, boys. Blabber and Fudge trying it. to defend, but Shopify do not have the push power. The Elder is live on the map. Oh, oh no. no. They got greedy for the end, and they can't end. Now the spawn timers are going to be up in time for the Dragon. I oh, think man. they have enough damage that Insanity and Boogie can just rush it. That's what they're going to try and do. Then they, they have, have to recall right away. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's theirs. It's theirs. It's theirs. Oh my god. What a game! 48 minutes and 49 seconds, Let's and go. I still don't know who the hell's going to win. Three flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to find at least. <laughs> Dude. Okay, I just uh, heard longest game of the split. Okay, now you go. Guaranteed banger. <laughs> okay, so Cecil's ult, I think it hits Jojo Pune as he's charging his ulti. The splash damage from knockup hits him and ruins the entire ultimate, and then it's all over. They use Skinner ultimate, they use Nico ultimate, and then it's just over. I, I just don't know how Berserker got where he got. Yeah, I was like. Because by the like, end of that fight, he was still in the base, and the re yeah. he probably was in the middle of the fight when his GA popped, and then in the four yeah. seconds of the revive, C9 all ran out, and it just looked really goofy. <laughs> They're like, yeah, bro. I'm almost certain that's what it was, is he died He died in the initial engage, yeah. and then as soon as he dropped, the rest of the team was like, all right, leave him. Definitely, yeah. All right, they got supers and elder for a minute and 50 seconds. But th They're going to try something. They can't. It's so late game. Those minions are paper. Yeah. And but elder makes everybody paper. They have Smolder on steroids right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the, the five-man Smolder. <laughs> oh, uh, I hate that champion. Just want to mention out there while we're here. That's fair, man. This is that, that's your time to shine. What are Shopify doing? I mean, they're, they're, trying, no they're trying to make playoffs, but this is the struggle. <laughs> 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 yeah. My bad, Judd. <laughs> if they lose, they are eliminated from the split. If they win, they can at least get a tiebreaker for playoffs, Someone maybe get it out right. Okay. Just go in and die while the, everyone else ends the game. 70 seconds left. He can't. Just hook on the Elder. Back line. The minion waves are just getting destroyed. Fake God's going to okay, soak the turret here for now. Daisy's coming in. Nexus turret number one already down. Now Fake God and the rest of Shopify regrouping, getting ready for the next wave. There's 55 seconds left on the Elder. They're probably only going to have this next wave to still use the Elder buff. It's I think it's this one, or you just back off. Saison, just hook someone, ult someone behind him, and just die for the cost. Come on, bro. Please, someone just die here. Fake God. Saison, just get in there, bro. Bros. Lucian calling, just trying to stop the wave. Zazel and Fake God wanted to keep the wave alive. 
Oh. Now Blaver's got to back One up. Hit. Insanity and the rest of Shopify, they know that they only got 30 they seconds left here in the Elder, but the minion wave is gone. C9 will hold on. Back to another Baron. Yeah. <laughs> the back dance Baron, continues. Elder. <laughs> Let's do it again. I mean, I think like right now, if you measure the heart rate on Shopify's players, it's going to be up there. Everyone's in triple digits, for sure. It, it's probably one of those that's actually in a danger zone. Hold on, 10 seconds on the TP showing up. The Elder, five seconds left on it. Fake God making his entry back into the fight. As Fudge is already used Dominus. Nami wave goes out. Blabber's below half HP. The Nexus turret is not oh, dead yet. Jojo wants the angle. He goes in the engage on oh, three. Jojo Pyun again and again and again and again. He brings Cloud9 back from the edge. Look at Fudge's face. He's like, oh, it's so relieved. It's finally over. Man. Why didn't they do that hook plate before Elder expired? Why did you wait until they expired? The second Elder oh, expired, my... they hook in. JoJo counter engages. It's Cloud9 oh, my God. win the banger. Shopify are officially eliminated from playoff contention in spring 2024. Jat, you already said it, the longest game of our split so far. Shopify held on for so long, yeah. but I just cannot praise enough the clutch factor of this Cloud9 mid lane. Yeah, I mean, you said it, I mean, I'll say it. it's every single fight started with him getting hooked or him going in on the own team. There was no one else in this game that made any sort of play even near his level of impact. Yeah, massive plays by JoJo, bows for Cloud9. And you could, you could tell how much Shopify wanted that win. Yeah. I think how much down the stretch the nerves might have gotten them. Like, that last push was so strange once the Elder came to it. You have to be oh. disappointed after that battle. 52 minutes, yeah. clawing their way back, getting the Cloud Soul, and just losing in the final fight. 37 kills in 52 it minutes. It might be the single worst feeling in esports. That last game you play, it lost before your season is over, or your split is over, right? Yeah. Now you know you won't play a game until summer split, and then it's all over. And you can't stop thinking about that one team fight if you had ulted this one guy, or flashed that one ability, or something. It will all change. It's like we talked about earlier, League of Legends, the whole game could just come down to that one single instance, right? Yeah. The example earlier was, you know, Fake God getting this done on Berserker or whatever. Definitely. What if just one little thing is different? What if one interaction goes your way? What if back in mid lane when the Kai'Sa Void Seeker hit Blabber, it does 12 more damage and it kills yeah. him, right? One different rune maybe, you know? Right. Like, what if I have Scorch here for whatever reason <laughs> and he just dies? It's oh, it's tough. Great for for uh, Chopper Fiber Rebellion, but at least they got with a big banger. Wow. What a game, man. C9 will take their dub. <laughs> They'll go up to eight wins now. Again, still less than a lot of people predicted coming into the split, but you hey. just can never count these guys out, I feel like, especially with plays like that from JoJo getting made. Now it's time to join Emily and Blabber and JoJo on stage for an interview. Thank you very much. Uh, that game was, can we say, a banger, the longest game this split. How you guys doing? Uh, I think we need a ban, but we still won, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Um, you know, yeah. Just be happy we got third place, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, like, oh, take me through that sick, like, kindred Nico combo that you guys have, because obviously it was a core part of your composition. Uh, but then the game went way longer after that, turned into an ARAM. So, Jojo, we'll start with you. Take me through your base defense. As Shopify have a tiny bit of Elder left, they're going. What are your comms like? I mean, we just said that their Elder's about to run out, and it's her last wave, so if we defend this, we should be good. And then they just gave us an angle, and we went for it. So I think we are playing really well defending before, but I thought they could have been more aggressive, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think they, honestly, both teams tunneled a bit too hard on the NA ram this game. Uh, but I think like they could have easily taken three inhibs with their uh, elder instead of just sieging down mid one lane and just taking Baron after we probably would have lost. But I'm I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it was fortunate. Um, one thing I was going to have you take me through just Kindred as a pick. I did want to talk to you about it a little bit. Uh, just because we've seen it a lot in LPL from Milky Way specifically, and then kind of spreading, Shun played it last night. Um, obviously, they were they managed to keep you down in marks for a really long time. So what I want to ask is, you know, why why is your team not defending you? Uh, to be honest, I think I played like really bad today. Okay. Uh, I haven't played that much Kindred, I would say, and it was like a 
Uh, we just had confidence in the 4-5. Uh, I think I definitely could have played better on my marks. I think my first mark, I could have got two uh, on the bot crab. And yeah, I wasn't playing enough for my marks. And I don't think I played overall that well. But in general, you need to play for marks as kindred. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, and then Jojo, you kind of famously on pros this past week said you would love to face 100 Thieves in playoffs. I mean, I think 100 Thieves is really good. If I verse them, I'm going to be very scared. So I really hope we don't verse them. So I changed my mind. So if we verse them in playoffs, I'm going to be really sad. See, I was about to say, like, oh, OK, what advice do you have for FlyQuest to, you know, like win and then seed 100 Thieves against you? Wait, wait, I don't know how it works. If FlyQuest wins? If FlyQuest win, we yeah, play 100. Yeah, if FlyQuest win, you play 100. Oh, they're, they're, they're too old. OK, I really want 100 Thieves to win because I really don't, like, uh, I really want to verse FlyQuest. So we'll see. Okay. All right. <laughs> Um, and then last uh, from both of you, I'll start with you, Blabber. Um, obviously, it's been a really up and down season for you guys. What do you think you have to improve on the most going into playoffs? I think we just need to play better. And when we have our leads, uh, a lot of times we get our leads and then I feel like we're running around like headless chickens. We don't know, we don't execute well, I would say, um, from the positions that we have. So yeah, we have to look at how you know, our macro, how we're playing as a team. And in general, I think we are getting leads. We just aren't transitioning them well into the mid to late game. OK. Yeah, Did just play better. That? Play Agreed. better. You heard it here. And before the break, do you guys know what's happening next Thursday? That's right. It's LCS playoffs Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday next week. We'll see you on the other side of the break for FlyQuest versus Dignitas. Oh, they're not hitting, OK? Okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to it's fine. Let's just celebrate this win because we got the win and talk about it to review, guys. Let's okay, I'm done. Good job. Dude, why'd you put your new rig in the basement? Didn't you hear? Bill's a good gillionaire now. Basically, my new connection is so strong I can game anywhere. Check it out. We've got Gamer Rocker, Gamer Floaty, Gamer Couch. Whoa. It's got wheels. Gamer Bench, Gamer Throne, and Gamer Mower. What's that? It's hard to game while walking downstairs. I get it. That's smart. Live like a gagillionaire with low latency everywhere. AT&T Fiber with all fi Look what I've just made. The perfect pearl. Not too bad, but check this out. <sighs> Whoa, a true Venus clam. Red Bull gives you wings. The new Red Bull Sea Blue Edition with the taste of Juneberry. Wings for every taste. No, no, that's fine. Oh, I locked in Mordecai. Oh, what? Oh, for me in a 1v1, I'm thinking lethal tempo. We got 1v1s with Shopify Rebellion, Solo Lanes, Fake God, and Insanity. LCS Discord suggested some matchups for you two. One of them is a Yumi 1v1. Okay. The other one is an Aurelia 1v1. So what would you rather play? Yumi. Let's do Yumi. You want to do Yumi? I'm You're that scared of my Aurelia? Yes, I'm going to lose the Aurelia matchup. <laughs> Aurelia's a mid lane champion. Wow. The what confidence. Mean, what, what are you doing, well, Aaron? It's a 50-50 right, right. win. Yumi? Right, you know? We'll do Yumi. Well, what about our... Oh, wait. We're banning. Okay, what about our runes, though? Figure it out for yourself, bro. Oh, what? We're not you doing You want to match runes? Yeah, let's match runes. I thought this we're supposed to use our brains here. Oh, my God. You, you have brain power no, no, left, no. right? Oh, yeah. You're going to use that as an excuse afterwards, after you after potentially win. Yeah, why are you screen peeking? Stop oh, screen peeking. I didn't realize it was showing it. Oh, you didn't realize while well, you looked straight at the yeah, monitor? Yeah, I didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize either didn't when realize I just it. looked up as well. Hold on. I have shadows on. I can't play. Oh, you have I a bad item. Dude, I'm, I'm stuttering across the map. I'm just getting shit on. Nice, I crit for that minion. I'm out. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, you started zeal? I, I was, thought I was going to crit more, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I was going to leave it up to chance. 
That's hilarious. Awesome. You know? right, I'm gonna slow push. Dude, where where's my hextech portal? This map's outdated. A little low there, Aaron. You wanna base? How are you level five? Well, I've been slow pushing. <laughs> are you slow pushing, you tryhard? <laughs> oh, you beat me. Oh my god. Wait. 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 Level three versus five. Oh my god. Oh, barrier. A shield. You have barrier still. <laughs> I didn't use it. Okay. Okay. Wait. My death timer is. It was like what? Twenty seconds almost. What is that? I'm level three to six, man. Ult, ult, ult is is, can I FF? <laughs> can we remake? Yeah. <laughs> I kill you once already? Okay, I gotta look for another kill. What are you gonna do, Aaron? Are you I gonna just fight? push? Or are you gonna base? My connection's pretty good, and I don't care about mana. That's how you know he's sweating. <laughs> just listen to this guy. Yeah. He's ready to go. Thank you. Oh, he's diving! Woo! Oh, I can't auto. Aaron? Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> Wait, oh, oh, yes! Oh, my God! Oh, it didn't matter! Yes. What did you even hit me with? Uh, auto. There's so many photos, by the way. Look at that. It's so cute. Yeah. Well, easy win, as I expected. You left it up to chance. Sometimes the dice doesn't roll that way. But we'll yeah, see you next just time. Just unlucky. On 1v1.